Today's scripture reading is from the New Testament, a letter from Paul to the church at Corinth, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 through 18. It is, the version that we're going to be reading is from the NIV. If everything works according to schedule, it should magically appear up top here. Should we experience a technical malfunction, you can follow along for a similar interpretation in your pew Bible beginning at page 180. A reading from 2 Corinthians. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then, death is at work in us, but life is in work at you. It is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. Since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Good morning, Christ Church. As we continue our series on hashtag B-U-M-C, today we're gonna talk about the the topic of resiliency or being resilient with God. Resiliency is a key component of our faith. Our ability to be resilient directly relates to our faithfulness in God's call to make disciples and a willingness to share Christ's love in diverse environments. The church has been able to survive since the day of Pentecost because of God's faithfulness to strengthen our ability to be resilient. This passage from Paul in 2 Corinthians uncovers several truths regarding Christian resiliency. A resiliency found within the church, our communities, and ultimately inside of us is directly related to our faithfulness to God's call. A resiliency that has allowed Methodism to develop from a student-led organization at Oxford University in Oxford, England, from a group of kids called the Holy Club, and to a movement of over 80 million people around the world serving God in some form of Methodism. A resiliency against name-calling and social isolation because these students created systems or methods to experience God's grace on a deeper and personal level. Like our founders today, we must have a resilient spirit against worldly things that come against us to continue God's call to go out into a sin-sick world and embrace people that God placed in front of us. Like our founders, we must have resiliency to speak against institutional evils and seek the empowerment of others. So to be UMC is to have faith that feeds into our ability to be resistant, resilient. Resiliency in how is how we bounce back from the works of evil because we are God's children. 
We are the people of God. We bounce back, not with anger and hostility. We bounce back with love, forgiveness, and well wishes because we are the people of God. We are children of God. And it's the love of God that strengthens us. To be UMC is to know that we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all surpassing power is from God and not from us. The word treasure points to what is most valuable or sacred within us. And as a believer in God, a believer in Jesus and a child of God, my most valuable thing is my faith. It's, it's not my home or the car that I drive or the people that surround me as much as it is my faith, my relationship with Jesus Christ. That is the most valuable thing that I have in this world. And as Paul explains, our treasures are not locked up behind steel beams and concrete walls, but God has put our treasure in jars of clay. Our treasures are housed in containers that can crack, that, that containers that can be chipped away at, and containers that can shatter if too much pressure is applied upon them. But God secures these jars of clay and invests heavily into us, to our treasures of faith. Has anybody in here been in a situation in which you felt like you were about to crack? You felt that you were about to shadow and, and, and your jar of clay was about to fall apart. But God reached down in love and found you. You know that God secures us with God's love. I'm going to give you three points. I'm going to be out the way this morning. Here's the first point. God loves. It's the love of God that makes you resilient. This one is a little difficult today. God never intended for our greatest treasure, our faith, to exist locked away from the pressures of life. Our most valuable treasures, our faith, is going to feel the heat of disappointment, the heat of betrayal, and the heat of loss. We all will experience those things in life. But God allow those things to take place to strengthen our faith, to make a deposit into our jars of clay. And when things are hot and difficult, our faith cries out to God and grace is released into our lives. This part's hurt, but it is true. I remember years ago, I was so disappointed over the issue that I became angry with God. I did not want to read scripture. I didn't want to pray. I didn't even want to go to church. In essence, the pain of being who I was or who I am was too difficult for me. And my jar of clay had all types of cracks in it. It was about to shatter. I was tired. I was worn down. I was beat and depression would start to set in. But the love of God reached down and carried me through. So today I can look back and praise God over those hard times because the pressures of life has taught me he is a friend that's closer than a brother. The pressures of life has taught me that he's a bomb in Gideon. The pressures of life has taught me that he's the lily of the valley. 
So when I pray out today, I got experience knowing that my God would answer my prayers. It's because those low points in life has taught me a lesson that God is present. So today I can look back and know that God walks with us. If our faith is always locked away and it's secured behind closed doors and we never feel the pressure of life, then our ability to receive the deposits of faith and grace are limited. God loves us too much to abandon us or abort the call that's inside of us. It is the love of God that makes our grace and makes our life resilient. As Paul wrote, it is this all-surpassing power from God and not from us. It was God who delivered Daniel from the lion's den. It was God who parted the Red Sea when the children were needed to cross. It was God who stopped the, the river Jordan from flowing. It was God who stopped time and let the Israelites fight the battle. It was God who brought some kids home. It was God who restored some marriages. It was God who gave you hope when you had nothing but despair. It was God. Our ability to be resilient comes from the love of God. Paul explains, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may be revealed in that same body. You will feel some pressures of life, but the love of God will carry you through. Second thing this morning is this. We are resilient for God's glory. To be UMC, is to understand that our ability to be resilient brings glory to God. When Wesley and the other students at Oxford were enduring name called in social isolation from their peers, they were more concerned about experiencing God's grace over the benefits of other activities that young men could be doing. Like the students of yesteryears, we got to be more concerned about experiencing the grace of God in our lives over anything else. And sometimes we have to own the criticism. The fact that we're called Methodists is not a badge of carriage. It actually was a mockery that was tossed upon these students. They have methods for everything. They will wake up early in the morning to spend time with God in prayer. They made sure they visit the sick. They made sure they go in. They took the church to the people. They were doing things that other students were like, why are you doing all this stuff? You got a method for everything. Or you got a system in place for everything upon the earth. So they started calling them Methodists. Sometime claim the criticism. If they call you, if they call you holy, claim the holiness. If they call you a prayer warrior, claim the prayer warrior status. If they call you more than a conqueror, claim the conquership because of the love of God. Claim, claim the criticism sometimes because they, that criticism is pointing you in the right direction. Our resiliency brings honor to God. We are called Methodists today because resiliency honors God. And in our lives, we have to be willing to endure the heat associated with living out God's call. When God calls you go into diverse places and speak the truth of God's love, be courageous, follow Jesus. It's gonna take every ounce of resiliency that God has given you. 
when we go into uncharted territories, we go to bring the light of Christ and the light of God's love into darkness. Paul explains it this way. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Like Wesley and many others, our desire to share his God grace with people brings glory to God, especially when we follow Jesus' call with courage and boldness. The heat or the pressure of life can benefit us because it shows God's grace working through us. When people see you overcoming obstacles in your life, it encourages them and let them know that God is present with you. When people see you loving yourself after someone has walked out the door, it encourages them and let them know that God is with you. When people see you putting yourself up at the financial ruin, they see that God is with you and it encourages them. Our resiliency to overcome the obstacles of this world gives honor and glory to God. The final thing this morning, obedience to God's call grants resiliency. Obedience to God's call grants resiliency. Paul explains, therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and monetary troubles are achieved in us an eternal glory that outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. As long as we are obedient to God's call upon our lives, God will strengthen our ability to be resilient. And our faith in God is the key to Christian resiliency. But what is faith? Hebrews explain faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. God strengthen us when we walk by faith. When we walk by faith, we see people who are broken as beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. When we walk by faith, we see people from all walks of life coming together to worship God in the same place. When we walk by faith, we make space for families we do not know yet. We create room for them to have a place to come and worship when we walk by faith. When we walk by faith, we claim people back from the brinks of, the, of devastation in their lives. When we walk by faith, we're calling children back home to our, to our community who hasn't been here in years. When we walk by faith, we are claiming people are healed by the blood of Jesus. When we walk by faith, we walk with the power of God, knowing that our faith is strengthened by God's love. And our obedience to God's call infuses our life with more love, more hope, more joy, and more peace. It was by faith that our biblical forefathers were obedient unto death. It was by faith that our Methodist foreparents were obedient to God's call 
and we have what we have today, the Methodist movement. It is by faith that we are building a church that welcomes all people regardless of their background. It's by faith that we live out God's call in our life. That obedience to God's call will grant you resiliency as you work out God's calling in your life. Amen and amen.